Most fluid systems involve some sort of transformation. This can be in the form of a fluid domain transformed into a different fluid domain, or a fluid domain into mechanical translation or into mechanical rotation, among others. Here we're going to talk about how to analyze these systems in a general procedure. As usual, we want to do this using principles rather than formulas. In mechanical systems, we already saw that uh, we use the concepts of equal and opposite forces and shared displacements in order to figure out how any mechanical transmission system works. In fluid systems, similar ideas apply, except we like to say equal pressures throughout any chamber, continuous chamber, and shared flow in any continuous chamber. What do we mean by that? We can measure the pressure, P1, at one point, and P2 at a different point, but since these two are part of a continuous chamber, we know that P1 actually has to be equal to P2. This is true for any continuous chamber of fluid. Secondly, there's shared flow in the system. Motion in the first piston is going to produce a mass flow Q, which is going to cause fluid to move into the second chamber. And if there's no other place for the fluid to go, it has to end up in the same mass flow rate, Q. So this is also true for any continuous chamber, or uh, it can also be thought of in any uh, junction, the total flow in has to be equal to zero. How do we apply these two concepts? Well, we have two concepts, so we're going to produce two different equations. First, let's apply the equal pressures law. We know that the pressure P1 is equal to the pressure P2, and this is going to help us understand how the mechanical part of the system is going to behave. The mechanical part actually has forces that we'll call F1 and F2 acting on the piston, and from that we can sum the forces on piston 1, and those forces are going to be equal to F1 minus the opposing force from the pressure of the fluid times the area of the piston is equal to zero. In other words, F1 is equal to P1 times A1. We can do a similar calculation for the lower piston, where we're going to sum the forces due to the uh, pressure of the fluid, and that's going to give us F2 minus P2 A2 is equal to zero. In other words, F2 is equal to P2 times A2. Recall that P1 is equal to P2, so that immediately gives us a formula, which is that F2 is equal to A2 over A1 times F1. So we've derived our first equation using equal pressures. Now let's derive the equation from shared flow. Here, what shared flow lets us do is it lets us understand the relationship between the motion of the two pistons, where the mass flow rate on the top has to be equal to the density, rho, times the cross-sectional area of the piston times the velocity, x1 dot, where we're talking about a density of the fluid. That has to be the same as the flow rate on the bottom, which is going to be the same density of, of the fluid, but a different cross-sectional area and a different velocity. If we combine these, we can actually eliminate rho and q, and we immediately discover that x2 dot is equal to a2 over a1 times x1 dot. So now we've derived two equations, one using equal pressures and one using shared flow. There's another thing we can do that's actually not a new equation, but it's actually an outcome from the first two equations. And that is, as a helpful sanity check, we can make sure that the total power into the system is equal to zero. This is just a restatement of conservation of energy that says that if energy has nowhere else to go, whatever energy you put in has to be equal to the energy that comes out. Well, what's the power going into the system? We have power going in on the top, which is F1 times uh, X1 dot. And then similarly, we have power coming into the bottom, which is uh, going to be negative F2 times X2 dot. 
this has to be equal to zero. How can we check this? Well, we already have formulas that allow us to uh, eliminate x f2 and x2 dot. So let's first eliminate f2. That's a2 over a1 times f1. And then x2 dot is just a2 over a1 times x1 dot. Immediately we see that all of the a's cancel each other. And so we get f1 x1 dot minus f1 x1 dot. And so we can verify this does indeed equal zero. So that means that our total power in is equal to zero as we expected. Let's summarize. We are developing methods to work with fluid transformers. And the principles that we use are similar to what we saw in mechanical systems where we had equal and opposite forces and shared displacements. Here we have equal pressures and shared flow. And this is true for any continuous chamber. And uh, shared flow is due to conservation of mass that says that fluid going into any junction or continuous chamber has to be equal to uh, zero. And we also talked about a sanity check, which is that the power in is equal to the power out, or in other words, the total power into the system has to be equal to zero. Equal pressures and shared flows gives us two equations, usually relating two pressures and two flows on two sides of our system.